Hello everyone, my name is Mario Damiani and with the admissions team of the International University of Monaco and welcome to this Q&A session focused on our Master of Science in Sport Business Management. I'm pleased to introduce you uh, Professor Camille Safar, the Program Director of this Master. Hello Camille. Hello Mario. So this event is made up of two parts. The first part is a presentation of the Master made, made by the Program Director and then there will be a lot of time for your questions. So do not hesitate to write it down in the Q&A section or in the chat. We'll be answering to all of them. So I would say that now it's time to start and the floor is yours, Camille. Thank you, Mario. So on everyone behind the screen, uh, thank you for attending this presentation. So let's start from the beginning. So this master in sport business management is uh, for the students who would like to join sport industry, passionate about sport. So it's a very specific master and it's necessary to be trained to apply for some position in sport industry in small or big uh, companies. So as it's a very specialized industry uh, and extremely fast evolving um, and also with a lot of money, I don't know if you are aware, but this um, this industry is even more important in terms of figures uh, than the luxury sector. Uh, when we are talking about sport industry, we usually talking about three different pillars. So about marketing sport events, then the goods in sport, so the equipment, and the third pillar, the last pillar is the governance. So, and each pillar has a lot of revenues and uh, it, you can eventually apply for some of, have of some opportunities in these three pillars, depending on your interest. So that's why this master is exist. That's why this master is so uh, more and more um, interested by the students. And uh, if you would like to continue in this industry, uh, you need to have this specialized master. So what is important for our university, for IOM, is learning by doing concept. And that's why, as you can see on the slide, we have two types, we work with two types of, uh, of professors. So you will have the professor, the academic, the specialist uh, in the specific field, in academic field, but we have, you will have also the professors, can be also the academic, but they are mostly professionals with extensive professional expertise. So it's important for us to have these two profiles and to have kind of balance between these two profiles. So what about the program? So let's go in deep a little bit about the program structure. So just to have an idea about the, this master. So when you arrive in September, from September to December, you will follow the core business management courses. So we are accepting the student from different backgrounds. So this first semester is uh, for the students to get the basic knowledge of business management. And then it means that you will have the courses like accounting, leadership, management, uh, business strategy, or business ethics. Then after the Christmas break, we continue with the second term. So it's uh, from January to June. And here you will uh, follow the mainly the specialized courses. So here we dive in, uh, into the sport industry. So you will discover what is the operational marketing, what is the event management, how e-sports e work, what about tokenization, digital strategy, etc. So as you can see, it's uh, only 10 months of courses. So it's very short period and uh, it means by definition that you need when you enter this master you need to be focused on your studies so you will have a lot of assignments a lot of group work a lot of active learning as well so it will be very intensive be prepared for this um just to give you a few courses the name of few courses so you will have courses like sport brand management you will have courses governance in sport uh, operational marketing and sponsorship e-sport, digital strategy and tokenization, etc. And then by uh, the end of June, we continue what we call capstone project. So the capstone project can have four different phases. So you can decide to do an internship, 
so it should be for four to six months. You can do it wherever you want. So it can be US, UK, Australia, it's up to you to choose the country. Uh, or you can decide if you would like to continue in more academic field, you can decide to do academic thesis or uh, apply the research project, or even if you have some business idea and you would like to become entrepreneur, then you can choose the entrepreneurial project. So it means that during four to six months, you will work, you will be followed by the advisor or professor helping you to elaborate your business plan and then to launch your company after the end of your studies. So, um, the key points, so as you can see, this is essential for us to have, to, to give you the possibility to get the experimental learning during your studies. So you will have the professors, you will have the professionals uh, in, uh, in front of you in the class, but also you will work uh, on the real life project. So um, for example, uh, one of the most important courses during the spring semester, it's applied research project. So you will work as the consultant agency in, and you will present your findings in front of your clients. So it's a real life case. So you need to be very professional uh, and uh, the clients, they are waiting from you very professional attitude. Uh, just to give you examples, so the the students work the previous year work with the uh, IS uh, Monaco Football Club. Uh, two years we work with the EPRI. Uh, so this is something it's very important uh, for your fu future career and very relevant for your future career. Um, so another point that we are lucky we we have a chance to be in Monaco. And Monaco hosts a lot of very high and sport international events. So I can, of course, mention some of them, the most uh, important, most uh, famous, uh, like Tennis Rolex Master or Grand Prix, but also Sportel, which is the biggest fair in the world in terms of sport media, the most important broadcasting uh, contract signed during Sportel. So you will be exposed to, to all these networking moments. Uh, and uh, thanks to the partnership that we have uh, with these companies, uh, with the event, you will be able even to participate to some of them and to develop what we call experiential learning. Other point that, of course, we regularly organize the conferences, the seminars. Um, our care department are very engaged. So they follow the students from the beginning. They help you to work on your CV, to, to, to work on your presentation skills. You will have also the sessions with your coach, um, specialized coach. Uh, during the year, we organize regularly the networking moments. Um, um, maybe the one important thing also to mention that in spring semester, the career department organized the business days where the company come uh, at IOM in Monaco, they present their companies, they, pre they, they talk about the profile that they are looking for, and uh, eventually you can get an internship uh, proposal or even a job position during this, um, this day. Um, another last probably point that I would like to mention, it's our field trip. Um, so every year we organize a field trip, uh, which lasts around five days. Last year we went to London. Uh, this year we are going to Lausanne. So each year we try to find, uh, like, um, to discover the pillar, one of the pillar of the sport industry. So last year it was event management. So we visited a lot. Uh, the organization organizing the events, uh, the marketing agencies. This year we are going to Lausanne, so we will discover more um, governance parts. So we will visit the Federation, Olympic Committee, uh, FIFA, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so yes, I think I gave you a very quick picture of this master. I can talk the hours about this, but let's uh, <laughs> let's go further. And I think uh, it's 
it's uh, probably time for Mario to present the application process, and then there will be the time for your question. <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you for this presentation, Camille. And now, guys, let's talk a little bit about the application and admission process. But I remember you, I remind you that it is the time also to write down your questions in the Q&A section and in the chat. So how to apply? Uh, you know, IUM is a truly international university. We welcome students in all programs from more than 70 nationalities from all continents. So the, the process is quite straightforward and only fully online. So it's a pretty easy for you to apply any, from anywhere in the world. You need to go on our website, www.monaco.edu. Uh, you will, as you can see in the picture, there is always an always appearing button at the bottom of the screen, apply online. If you click on it, you'll be redirected onto an application platform where you will be asked to upload a series of documents that we need to evaluate your profile. First document is a letter of motivation. It's a one-page statement letter when, where you'll be asked to introduce yourself, tell us why you're interested in the sport industry, uh, what, uh, what are your experiences, maybe what is showing your actual interest in, uh, in the sport management, <clears throat> and uh, maybe sharing if you have a, in mind already a professional project. In the end, the entire process is motivational. Uh, the evaluation is uh, not only, but mostly focused on understanding the level of motivation and willing, willingness to engage in a demanding program. So this is the first document that starts showing us uh, something about you in these terms. Second document are the transcripts of your uh, bachelor degree. In fact, to be eligible to attend this master, you need to have at least a three-year bachelor degree. Uh, we start application one year prior to the intake. Uh, applications for fall 2024 open early October this year. Uh, so it means that a uh, good part of you won't have already finished, won't be already graduated at the time of the application. And this is not a problem. You don't need to be graduated. You can upload your transcript at the moment that you, when you have, uh, the moment you have arrived, uh, in your current studies. So if you're just starting your last year, you'll be uploading uh, the transcript of the first two years. Then third document is a CV or a resume. So the list of your studies and your experiences. You don't have to have a professional experience to join this master, but most of you, even as students, have done some experiences, maybe summer jobs, or weekend jobs or internships. So we would like to know about them. Then we will ask from you a pass copy of your passport, a photo, the kind of photo that you would use for an ID, and then an English test. The English proficiency test that we accept our IELTS, TOEFL, or Cambridge. We require from you a B2 level. The good news is that the test is not strictly needed at the time of the application. So if you don't have a test, no worries. You can still finalize your application, go through the process, knowing if you're admitted, and then focusing afterwards in uh, uh, obtaining uh, this test. The latest deadline to get a test is before beginning of classes. So the orientation day, uh, you have to prove your English test at latest. Last step will be paying uh, eight euros as uh, application fees, eight zero. Once everything is done, we will check your documents and get back to you, proposing you a timing for the admission interview with the program director, so we, the Professor Savarov. It's a 30 minute conversation with your teams. It's a motivational conversation, again, explaining who you are, why you're interested in this program, why in Monaco, so telling Camille, a little, bit, a little bit more about you, maybe some point that lets you stand out a little bit more. Uh, and then there will be a jury assessing all candidates. And let's say that from the moment when you finalize your application until the moment that when we, you will receive uh, the answer, our answer about your admission, let's say that this process won't take uh, more than two weeks normally beyond special periods. For instance, we are approaching uh, season's break, so we'll be closed uh, 
from for Christmas and New Eve. Uh, so of course, in this time, uh, in admission, the applications will be treated uh, in a longer period. But normally, the process takes no more than two weeks. If we move forward to the next slide, we will see that you will see my contact. So. I'm Mario, I'm the admission manager for this master. I um, manage all applications, but also I'm available to answer all your questions and also to set phone or video calls with you to discuss marine death, uh, this program. So do not hesitate to write me or get in touch with me. I will write also my contact details in the chat when we are finishing this event. And also uh, I will follow up with you uh, after the event so so let's start with your questions uh okay what is the typical schedule of a master's student okay so um let's say that there is no really the typical because it depends on the semester so the first semester usually uh the student have around 15 hours per week 15 hours uh, of classes per week, and then the same number of hours for homework. This is the usual schedule for the mm. fall semester. Then in spring, it's quite different because in spring you will have a lot of adjunct professors, so you will have professionals in front of you. So usually uh, some of the weeks can be very condensed uh but still we are trying to keep uh, the number of hours around uh, 20 22 hours per week um to keep you to give you the time to prepare the assignment and to do your homework as well so let's say around 15 to 17 hours per week in full semester and then 20 to 22 hours um in spring semester Okay, let's go let's move to the next question. Do you choose one specialization or, or can you do more? So this master, it's already very specialized. So there is no really after afterward specialization. Uh, you will have classes like specialized classes, for example, media rights. So this is something that definitely can be a kind of specialization, but this master is one program and all the students doing the same uh, number of hours, the same courses. Okay, so what is the curriculum like? Okay, so I mentioned already a few of the courses. So let's say uh, the fall semester, as I mentioned, we are talking more about the core business management courses. So here you will have accounting, uh, management and leadership, business ethics, business strategy, and then um, sport business overview. I'm trying to, to memorize all the courses. So, um, and governance, international governance. So this is the fall semester. And then the spring semester, it's, as I mentioned, we dive in uh, to the sport, so we are talking about operational marketing, esports, digital strategy and tokenization, media rights and media operations. Um, what else? Uh, event management and uh, um, venue, event and venue management, um, project management, etc. So in any case, if you are interested, for sure, Mario will be able to, to share with you later the, 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 the actual curricula of the program. Absolutely, absolutely. So on the website, it says that the option to start in September or January. If you start in January, is it the same course or there's a difference between starting in September and starting in January? So it's the same cohort. Uh, so you are doing, if you are, eligible to join us in January, then it means that you will do only the most fun part of the of the curricula. So you will do only the sport related courses. So uh, the curricula of the spring semester, but for this you need, maybe Mario will be better to say that the yeah. number of- Yeah, let's say that the, the master starts only, in, let's say the entire master starts in September. To be eligible, 
to do this master, you just need to have a three-year bachelor. So 180 European credits or 90 US credits. Uh, and uh, uh, the background of your studies is not so relevant because as Camille said in the first semester, so September, December, we will be doing also uh, classes on the fundamentals of management, economics, accounting, organizational behavior and so on. So if you've never done those, you will be able to keep up uh, uh, during the first semester. We have then a special entry, which is the general intake, which is joining the same class that started in September. So it's not the beginning. You'll be joining the class that started in September uh, directly for the second semester. And this is available only for those who studied already business management and instead with a three-year bachelor, with a four-year bachelor or a bachelor and a master. So a minimum 240 European credits or 120 American credits. So a higher number of credits and instead of coming for any kind of background, you need to come strictly from a business management environment and already done the subjects that we're doing in our first semester. Uh, if you're eligible, you can join in uh, um, in January. The, the master will be shorter than because you'll be staying in class just six months instead of 10, but you'll be getting the same uh, degree with the same credits. So if you want to know more about your eligibility, just drop me an email, I can check transcript for you. Uh, what is the entry requirement? I think that I answer at least technically. I don't know if you want to add something to that. Maybe just that your grades, uh, your bachelor grades, is very important, of course. However, your motivation probably the most important thing. Your engagement, your commitment, and your desire to continue in this field. So that's why the interview is crucial for the process of application and admission. Absolutely. So what is the accommodation like? And my answer to that, you know, guys, that Monaco is a teeny tiny nation and it's surrounded by France and there are some French towns that are directly connected to Monaco. Maybe not all of you, not all of you will be familiar with this idea, but there's never been a border in history between France and Monaco. So once you're eligible to be in France, you're eligible to be in Monaco. It's like just like changing neighborhood in the same city in a way. So no border crossing, no checks, nothing. This is why most of the students live in France because it's uh, less expensive. They're living inside the Principality of Monaco, but according to where you live, it will be uh, also just walking to the university or taking a train to come here. So accommodation uh, for us is renting an apartment, but the student services uh, will um, offer guidance and counseling in this research in the sense that they will share platforms where you can browse to look for apartments available to rent. You'll be put into a WhatsApp group share with all the new students starting with your intake. There's a lot of exchange, uh, students looking for housemates, or sharing their houses, or we publish offers coming from a owner. So in the end, it's a personal research, but with the help of our student services, um, so far, not a huge problem for our students. And then according to the kind of city where you decide to leave, uh, the budget also might vary quite a lot. In general, even the most expensive solutions are Ne never more expensive than living in a normal Western European city. So uh, it seems that specific skills are required to work in the sport industry, especially in positions such as marketing, even management and sponsorship. However, what about more corporate roles like legal, finance, and HR? Does obtaining an MSc really boost your career in sports? a very good question so of course the special skills uh, to work in sport industry definitely uh, it's something needed uh, if you for example have already the bachelor degree in law and you would like to to specialize in uh, in the sport law then definitely this master for example can help you to boost your career so it's always depend on your profile. If you, for example, uh, did a bachelor in uh, hospitality, but you would like to orient yourself to, to the event management, sport event management, 
once again, this master is definitely can boost your career. So it's really very specific to the person. That's why we have the, a lot of discussions with the students during the year, with the coach to, for, for, to help you to, 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 to finalize and to, to find a way how to boost your career with this master. So what, well, I think that we already answered to that, but what are some modules we will be taking I think I have mentioned already all the courses yeah. that I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, drop me an email if you want to receive the program offline. I will send that to you uh, with pleasure. You know, you maybe if you move to the previous slide, uh, the attendees might see my email. So write yeah. it down and drop me an email. I will send that to you. So here's a student doing uh, a bachelor in law. And she would like to know she's eligible for the second term. I would say no, because you need to have done accounting, um, economics, management, organizational behavior, marketing. And I'm pretty sure that in the low studies, you won't have done them. So as I said, more than three years of credits, yes, but strictly coming from a business management academic background. So we have a question made up of many, many questions inside. So deadline for applications. We have already many students join the class. Guys, this uh, program is becoming hugely popular. So we're filling up the cohort pretty quickly. IUM is not a huge university, human-sized. We don't have infinite space to host students. Application being open for more than two months now will be still open for a long time. But once the cohort is full, application will be closed. So uh, do not wait for so long if you're interested. Move forward with the application. I cannot tell you that there's a specific deadline, but once the cohort is full and there will be very few places left, only the best will get those places and we'll be closing application. So. My suggestion is once you're ready, go and move further with the application. Bachelor degree in English, still I need to provide an English test is a good question before because I didn't mention. The test is not needed at all if you study the bachelor fully in English, not partially, but fully in English, or if you're a citizen of an English speaking country, of course. Tuition fees can be paid in installment, definitely, once you enroll, you'll be asked to select between a full uh, payment just before the beginning of classes or in seven installments during the in-class period. So tuition fees change a little bit during, uh, during each year. So for fall 2024, tuition fees are 25,500 euros for the entire program because as I said, it's a single cycle of 16 months. It's not year one, year two. Tuition fees are for the, not per year, but for the entire master. But uh, any raise in uh, tuition fees, it, it will keep them always in the same uh, price range. Uh, so I, we always already answered to the different takes. Is um, So I'm not answering to other questions about that. Uh, so what about uh, uh, um, placement data for graduates uh, at six months of graduation? Do you have uh, some information that you can share about that? Yes, of course. So um, I can share the data from 2021, uh, if I'm not wrong. So the placement data for this master, it was uh, 74%, 75%. Um, so usually around 40% uh, uh, stayed in Monaco. Uh, once again, uh, as Mario mentioned, this cohort uh, starting from this year, uh, we, uh, we faced a huge uh, expansion. So it's the data dated from, um, from the period where we had only 22, 25 students. Actually, this year we have a little bit more. So um, definitely I will be able to share the data placement data more recent uh, in a few months. Uh, but usually around 75, 80% of the student uh, 
found and uh, can find a job position after six months uh, of the end of their studies. Okay. So I sum up, guys, as a video question because sometimes they're again on intakes or uh, kind of bachelor. So as I said, any kind of bachelor is fine for uh, for September intake. Of course, there has to be let's like, coherence. You're maybe changing a field because you have a project in mind. This is what you have to share. This is where you, you your motivation will be evaluated. So for instance, this statistics program might be good in the sense that you're already familiar with numbers. And to be a manager, you need to be friend with my numbers. Is that correct? <laughs> Come here. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Is there online course as well? So not really, uh, because what we seen since uh, COVID, uh, our students um, were expressing uh, the desire to to be on campus, so to be back on campus. That's why actually we have uh, the classes on site. Uh, during the year, you will you can have few classes online, but it's really very small uh, quantity. So usually we ask in our university something too important to mention the the presence is mandatory. So we ask the student uh, to be on campus and uh, the professor, they are also on campus. So face-to-face, uh, -face, it's always uh, much more interactive than online courses. And uh, is the course mainly based on assignment or exams as well? So each course, uh, during each course, you will be evaluated. Uh, so the midterm, like the major assignment and the final exam. Um, it depends on the course. For some courses, of course, for example, it uh, can be the case studies, which is kind of normal way to learn uh, for, for example, for marketing uh, courses or the media rights courses. Uh, for the business law, it will be more uh, work about the contract, so to understand to how to read the contract, how to, um, uh, which uh, clauses you need to take attention about. So it depends on the on on the courses, of course, but usually you will have like the individual assessment and then the group assignment. For us, it's something important. We try to keep the balance between these two because your way the way how you work in group it's all also for us something important that you need to learn to do okay so are lessons more tutorial style or seminar style once again it depends on the courses so um Let's say, so it really depends. Of course, if you have the academic, the professor in front of you, the person who is uh, more in the academic field. So it will be more academical way of learning. If you have the professional in front of you, it can be much more interactive. So it really depends on the courses. There is, for example, for the presentation skills course, it's more the, the workshop style. So. It's really difficult to say if there is no exact way, there is no one uh, one type, there is really the me, max, the mix between uh, different types of professors and then the different types of style of, uh, of teaching. So, fair question for me, what are the living expenses on a monthly basis in Nice? Well, it depends on your lifestyle. In Nice, it's not, there's a lot of, solution so it might be really not that expensive you might go lower than 600 euros per month to live alone and then uh, last year uh subscription for one year to the train from nice to monaco with the student card was 90 euros for one year so and then in supermarkets uh normal prices like everywhere else in europe so um, then it depends on your lifestyle i think it's quite normal, pretty affordable, especially for Western Europe, I would say definitely good. And as I already said, our student services definitely offers guidance in finding accommodation, in being prepared for a visa appointment, which kind of visa you need to ask, 
uh, which are the documents you need to have prepared up front, which kind of insurance you will have to need. So definitely, yes, we assist you in doing this. So uh, when you say we have opportunity to be involved with the different sporting events, such as Monaco F1 Grand Prix, Monte Carlo Masters, what would be, what would be doing? And is it guaranteed that we will be involved with them? So we try to um, to relate it to the real world experience. So uh, we cannot guarantee you that you will be uh, involved in this event because it depends on your motivation. So um, uh, when so the student work during the several uh, events, uh, I can mention Sportel Grand Prix. Uh, Epre historical Grand Prix this year. So the idea that the process are uh, for you, for the students, it's like if you are applying for a job position. So you need to show your motivation. So you need to present your uh, your CV and uh, to write a motivational letter. And then you have the uh, the interview with the company. So for the Grand Prix, for example, you will have the uh, interview with the Automobile Club of Monaco. For the Sportel, you have with the team of Sportel, so the media act. And uh, the idea that uh, several few years we see that we need the students who are motivated, they definitely are involved in these events. So in terms of position, it can be different also depending on profile. So um, of course, uh, often we have a like hosting positions, so for example, welcoming assistance or conference assistance for the Sportel, uh, fun zone management, uh, helping to um, uh, to to manage the marketing uh, part, social media, press, etc. So it depends really on your profile. If you have already, for example, some experience in social media. Definitely, your profile can be very interesting. If you speak French, you can be definitely be chosen for the VIP uh, hosting. So it's really, first of all, it's like the work experience. So you are applying and then you're passing through the interview process. And the second that the different positions, so depending on your profile, you can be selected for the different positions. All right. So... What are the transcripts that you need to uh, you need to join the master? Do you need an average grade of all subjects you have now? So basically, the list of your exams with credits and grades. Uh, do you want to add some anything to that? No, no. Yeah, I. We need to see your grades, how you performed well during your bachelor. Okay. So, uh, what is better joining in September or in January? Mm, there's not a better option, I guess. First of all, you need to be eligible, which not so many. It is not the case for many. So, as I said, minimum for your bachelor strictly from business management. If so, for sure, joining in January, you spend, you'll be spending less time and it will cost less. But you'll be missing some experiences in Monaco because the calendar in Monaco is rich also in fall. So, there's the Sportel event, Business sport and those events you won't attend them because you won't be here and you'll be, let's say, uh, enjoying less the Monaco experience. So the fact of being here, the networking possibilities, the network of uh, uh, living in a place where the start the sport industry is really strong and developed, but also small in size, so where it is much easier to create meaningful connections. Uh, the longer you stay here, more chances you have to build up a professional network for your future uh, career. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. No, you were perfect. All right. So uh, it's a request about joining both Sport Business Manager and Luxury Business Manager, another great program at IUM. You cannot do both. You cannot do both together. You need to, to apply and follow just one because, as I said, it it's just a 10 month in class period, very intense. It's just not feasible to follow both. One solution though is possible because if you do one master, then you will be eligible for the January intake of the second one. So you can do one master in 10 months and then the internship and the second master only in six months in class 
less expensive then. And also, as an alumni, you will enjoy another discount because our alumni enjoy a discount. And in this case, you will be an alumni because we've already done a master here. And so uh, you can combine one after the other. This, yes, but not together. I hope this is clear. So uh, what are some career options after graduating? So let's say uh, I will uh, mention some of them. So I, we have the students working in uh, hospitality in Miami Stadium. We have the student, they are not student, they are the alumni working in uh, F1 team, Alpine, for example. Uh, we have the student working in uh, the company hosting all the F1 teams uh, in um, an organizational part. So uh, one student working in uh, Olympic Marseille. So there is a, a huge infinity of the opportunities. It also depends on what you would like to do. Marketing, communication, public relations, governance, um, hospitality. So for now, we can probably uh, cite every field, every domain where else we can find our alumni students. So I can enumerate a lot of positions, but once again, it depends on what you would like to do later, which kind of position you are aiming. And is there a maximum amount of students who can join the master? Of course there is, for me. Yes, so for example, uh, this year, I mentioned already this year, we have a huge increase. So there is 50 students and that's all. We close the this year with the fifty students. Um, the idea of the of this program is that when we're facing uh, this um, increase in numbers, mm -hmm. uh, we of course will create. If we continue to facing the same number of students and increasing in uh, in number of students, we will change the structure of the program. We will adapt. We will create different groups. As we can see, for example, for the master in luxury, so the master in luxury uh, have actually three groups already. So it depends on uh, on the. We cannot. I cannot. Uh, <laughs> I don't have my magic ball, so I don't know what will be the future. What's the future reserve for us? But definitely, um, we're trying to adapt. We're trying to improve the program year by year. So. When we see that the number of students increasing, then we adapt the program, we change the way of learning, we change, uh, we, we create the different groups, we create the specialization, et cetera. So for the moment, the number of students is 50. Um, so let's see what the future is there for. Absolutely. The leading uh, logic is that we want to keep a good ratio between students and professors. So there will never be huge classes in case the interest really grows even more, maybe there will be more classes, but always with a small ratio between students and professor. So is there a special program for students who are high sport athletes themselves? Very good question. So uh, this year we are trying to put in place uh, the system uh, that allows you to to follow your training sessions and uh, you will have the body who will follow the classes and record everything and the, the, the classes are putting online on uh, on the platform online platform so the idea that we should uh, launch this program starting from January so definitely we will keep you posted uh when it's done and uh, when it's uh put in place so i hope it will be uh, the launch will be uh, successful and we definitely will be able to welcome more and more professional athletes in our university okay guys now we have six more questions and this is all because uh uh it is time that and we finish so I'll be telling the next six questions and that will be all. As, as you see, there are my contacts everywhere. So write this down and drop me emails for other questions. So I have already a BA in sports management. Is this still relevant for me to pursue a master in sport management with you? 
it's the continuity of your bachelor. Uh, so I, of course, it's difficult for me to see your curricula and what you have uh, have done in your bachelor. But what I see, for example, because the university that I am propose also the specialization in sport uh, in third year of bachelor, and definitely the, the student that continue in master program, they appreciate because they learn a lot more than during their bachelor. So the continuity of your studies is even better for your career for future because it, there is a stable progression of your knowledge and your experience in this field. So are bachelor degrees from all European countries eligible? Well, uh, all bachelors uh, legally with the legal value from all over the world are accepted. We at IUM deliver degrees who are legally, really, who had, which has legal value that are legally recognized all over the world. And this is what required for me, that you have a legally recognized in your country bachelor degree, not a certificate. It has to be a bachelor, official bachelor degree. And that, it doesn't matter where you obtain this, but it's important that is it correspond to a, uh, legally recognized three-year minimum bachelor degree. So uh, I will be sending to all of you the registration of this event. So yes, you will receive the link because it will be published on YouTube, so accessible to anyone. So to revert to the same question before doing both masters, uh, the question was, is it, does it make sense to apply to both master? No, apply to the master that you think might be more appropriate for you and then speak clearly about uh, what your future goals, why you're maybe undecided. The program director will guide you. So the admission interview is a moment where program director evaluate you, but also for you guys, it's a moment to make questions for the program director, ask for help, clarification. It happens, uh, let's say quite often that you know, someone applies for a master and then the program director realized that the candidate is more fit for another program, such as the student to move further with another program because it corresponds more to the um, professional goals or aspirations. So I invite you to select one, maybe the one who has more chances to be clear in your goals and objectives and then even ask help for the program director in which side you, you might go. Is that good? Perfect. Okay. Is this course very competitive? It depends what you mean by competitive. So we are in sport business management, so I think that sport is competitive. But at the same time, uh, I think that in the sport business management cohort, it's probably the most solid and uh, friendly and uh, they all joined by one passion about sports so this is something amazing to see um you like i gave uh, just a few moment, minutes uh, before we were during the interview the image uh, for me came that if you put the students the uh, sport students in uh, in the classroom they can spend the hours and hours talking about sport, different sports. Uh, so I think that probably it's one of the, how to say, it's uh, more connected between them uh, cohort in the university. So I don't think that it's really competitive. I, I cannot apply this word for this cohort, but you will work they will work in the very competitive market. That's for sure. Sport competitiveness, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> so as I said, we're doing now the last question. Then again, write me for other questions. Is it possible to work a part-time job during the studies? So first of all, unless you're a European Union citizen, you're not allowed to work at all. So this has already solved some questions. In case you are eligible to work because you're a US citizen, uh, it's, a, it's quite tricky because uh, schedule varies constantly because there are different modules, different classes, different professors, each one with their own schedule. So if you start a program where you have, uh, I don't know, Thursday evening, Thursday afternoons free, 
it doesn't mean that you'll be free all because the afternoon. It might it will change constantly. So it's impossible to you to commit to a fixed timing. So sometimes we have students working like uh, very flexible works, working for events like steward stewardess or working uh, in evenings, maybe weekends, because in weekends we don't have classes so far. So in these cases, yes. But as uh, Camille said, it's a demanding program that we a lot of assignment, look at personal group uh, project you'll be asked to work. So in general commitment that we ask from student is a full time, knowing that you will get two years of credits only in 10 months in class. So uh, just a month, but you need to be devoted to, to that. So I guess uh, we're done. Uh, thank you for being here until the end, a very large group of attendees. As you see, I brought in the chat my email, uh, my direct email if you want to get in touch with me, but I will write you uh, by tomorrow uh, to follow up uh, after this event. So thank you, Camille, for the presentation. Thank you very much. And thank you guys for attending this Q&A session dedicated to the Master of Science for Business Management. Let's keep in touch and uh, maybe let's meet soon in Monaco for a visit of uh, our premises or maybe for the next intake in September 2024. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Mario. Goodbye.